Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are going to be finishing up. Jenny B. Jones has a peep in her pocket. Now, we've went on a field trip to the farm. That's right, we're here at the farm. And Jenny B. Jones was a little scared. Remember, she was scared of the ponies. Then she started getting scared of the chickens that you can hear in the background. She was afraid they were gonna peck her head into a nub. That's right, so uh, today, we're gonna find out what other fun things she gets to do because um, the last time we read, she was the farmer's special helper and she got to be in charge and she really liked that, didn't she? So today we're gonna find out what happens in chapter seven and eight of Junie B. Jones has a peep in her pocket. It says, after lunch, it was time to get the children together again. I clapped my hands, my loud hands some more. Okay, people, the fun is over. Get your buddy and get in line. On account of Farmer Flores wants to talk some more. Apparently, Farmer did a teensy frown at me. Then he holded my hand and we walked across the yard to another fence. Inside the fence, there was a building and some chickens. Okay, everyone, said Farmer Flores. This is the last stop on the tour today. He pointed. Who can tell me what that building right there is? Lucille jumped up and down real happy. The gift shop, the gift shop. I've been wondering where that was, she said real delighted. Do you know what a gift shop is? Yeah, a gift shop's where you visit a place and then they sell like souvenirs and little things that kind of help you to remember where that you've been or maybe they sell toys or candy. I always love the gift shops. Farmer Flores did a chuckle. Well, that's a good guess, but most farms don't have gift shops. He looked at the class. I'll give you a hint. He said, my wife and I get eggs for our breakfast every morning from that little house there. Just then, a boy named Roger jumped up and down and all around. I know, I know, I know. It's a hen house. Farmer Flores smiled. Right, it's a house where hens lay their eggs. I tugged on his shirt. He bended down next to me. Is there a rooster in there too? I asked kind of scared. Just one, he said, but there's lots of chickens. Wanna go in and say hello? I shook my head real fast. Then I run away from the gate, speedy quick. Polly Allen Puffer and Jim laughed and pointed. Look at Junie B. Jones. Junie B. Jones is afraid of roosters. Farmer Flores made an angry face at those two. Hey, hey, hey. I'm surprised at you boys. There's nothing wrong with someone being cautious about roosters. Just then, some of the other children looked kind of scared too. Why? Is the rooster going to peck us? Farmer Flores shook his head. No, that old rooster is in there is a pretty calm fella. But that doesn't mean Junie B should be laughed at. There's Junie B. No Farmer Flores, and she is not too sure about the chicken. He smiled a little bit. Well, I've been around farm animals all my life, he said, but every once in a while, I still come across an animal that I don't get along with. Farmer laughed. In fact, we used to have a goat who nipped at me every time I got near him. Now, nipped is like little bitty tiny bites. And for years, I made my wife go in his pen and feed him. After that, Farmer Flores winked at me. And Mrs. said I could wait outside the gate. My shoulders relaxed relaxed very much. I sat down on the grass outside the fence. Only wait till you hear this. Pretty soon, Farmer leaned over the fence where I was sitting and he was holding a baby yellow chick. I giggled and giggled at that cute little thing. A chick, a baby chick. Can I hold it, Farmer? Please, 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 I asked. Farmer Flores put the baby chick in my hands it was fluffery and softy and light as feathers. Ooh, I love it, Farmer. I love this baby chick. After that, I put the chick in the grass and on my lap and in my straw hat. Plus, also, I put it in my big, wide bucket. I peeked at it in there. <gasps> Remember, this says Junie B. Jones has a peep in her pocket. I wonder if that's the peep. I wish I could take you home with me. I wish I could take you home to my house and then you could live with me and my dog Tickle forever and ever. Would you like that, huh? Would you? The baby chick did a peep. Hey, you said yes, I said. I turned around. Did you hear that, farmer? The baby chick said it would like to come home with me. 
Farmer shook his head. Oh, I don't know, Junie B. I'm not sure you'd really like having Spike grow up at your house. I did a frown at that man. Spike? Who's Spike? He asked. I asked. Farmer pointed at the baby chick. Spike the chick. We named that little guy Spike. I peeked at the chick again. Yeah, only Spike is not actually a good name for a fluffery baby chick, I said. I know, Junie B, but Spike isn't going to be a little chick forever, you know. I know, I said back, because someday Spike will be a big, giant chick. Right, Farmer? Right, right? Farmer Flores shook his head again. Well, not exactly, he said. I looked at him real curious. Well, if Spike won't be a big chick, what's Spike going to be? I asked. Farmer, Farmer Flores took Spike back from me. He held him in his hands and patted his little softy head. Someday, Junie B, Spike will be a rooster. Chapter 8, Confusion. Sounds like Spike in the background. I had confusion in my head because first I hated roosters. Only then I liked Spike. Only Spike is going to be a rooster. And so now what am I supposed to do? I didn't talk much after that because confusion takes a lot of thinking. That's why. Plus, also, I might need counseling, possibly. <laughs> Finally, the children finished seeing the chickens, and they came out through the gate. Then Farmer Flores held my hand one more time, and he took us to a field with wild flowers in it. Excuse you. He said he could pick wild flowers for our mothers, because that would be a gift from the gift shop, he said. After all of us had our flowers, Mrs. took our picture with that nice man. After all, and here is the bestest part of all. Farmer Flores took off his hat, and his head was not enough. I danced all around that guy, very thrilled. Farmer Flores, Farmer Flores, your head is not a nub. Your head is not a nub. He wrinkled up his eyebrows. Uh, thank you, he said kind of quiet. You're welcome, Farmer, I said back, because guess what? Now I don't have to be afraid of roosters anymore. I jumped up and down. Now maybe I can be afraid of goats just like you, I shouted. After that, Farmer Flores looked at me a real long time. Then he rolled his eyes way up to the sky. I looked up there, too, but I didn't see anything. Look at her. So happy and there's Farmer Flores, and his head's not a nub, is it? So you think Jenny B. Jones is scared of the farm anymore? Nope, me either. Very good. Now, that's the end of Jenny B. Jones has a peep in her pocket. So what was the peep she had in her pocket? A baby chick, right. So let's see what the author Barbara Park has to say about writing this book. She says, when I tell people that I grew up in New Jersey, they're usually surprised to learn that my small hometown was surrounded by farms. And believe it or not, just like Junie B. Jones, I visited a farm on my very first field trip. I still remember the thrill of getting off the bus and seeing all the cows and pigs up close and personal, but the best part of the trip was getting to see the baby animals. I couldn't imagine how wonderful it would be to live with all those little pets right in your own backyard. I was shocked that Junie B wasn't as excited about her farm visit as I was about mine. But then again, the thought of a mean old rooster with peckery lips might have made me want to stay on the bus too. And I never even considered the scary ponies. Awesome. I hope you guys really enjoyed. Um, Junie B. Jones has a peep in her pocket. Maybe you'll get to go on a field trip to a farm someday and see all the wonderful animals. So, see you later.